I'd like to show you how to not only get rid of the symptom of peripheral neuropathy, but also the root cause as well. Now, many doctors, practitioners will just tell you what remedy to use without really giving you the understanding of this root mechanism in a simple way. That's what I want to do with you because once you really understand this, it's very unlikely you're going to ever get it again because you're going to know exactly what to do. Diabetic neuropathy is a condition that affects usually the bottom of your feet and sometimes the hands. Now, of course, the question is why does it affect those areas? Well, it's one of the first signs that you're having some pretty severe problems with your blood sugar. And because you have very long nerves in the body, the very last end of the nerve is going to be affected first because that's the area of your body that gets the least amount of oxygen or fuel compared to uh, some nerves that are closer to the heart. And I'm primarily going to focus on diabetes and blood sugar problems because there are other causes of peripheral neuropathy, but not as common. Like for example, chemotherapy could cause it, hypothyroidism could cause it, uh, some type of autoimmune disease, some medication, a virus, and Lyme disease. Diabetes tends to affect uh, four tissues, nerves, arteries, eyes, kidneys. But this peripheral neuropathy can be a real pain because you have to walk. Sometimes it's hypersensitive, sometimes it's burning, sometimes it's severe pain, and sometimes it's just itching. But there's some weird thing going on with the nerve. And the problem is over time, if we don't correct it, it can end up with ulcers in your lower part of your body, gangrene. But when you understand the mechanism, the solution is really simple. So a couple of things going on with the nerves on the bottom of your feet. If you look right here, you'll see this uh, insulated wire, right? This would be compared to an insulation around your nerves, and that insulation is called myelin. And what happens with a diabetic is the myelin is breaking down to the point where you have like a raw nerve. The second thing is you're getting a lack of blood flow to, or circulation in general, nerve and blood flow to the bottom of your feet. Because you're not getting the circulation because there's damage in the vascular system, you're going to basically have nerves that are getting starved. But I'm going to go a little bit deeper, but in a simple way, because I really want you to understand and what's happening at the cellular level. Because if you remember in some of my other videos, I talk about the mitochondria, which is this little energy factory. And what happens when you consume too much sugar, as in a diabetic situation, you overload the motor. Okay, But really, there's a kind of a pre-motor even before the mitochondria that has to break down glucose into something that the mitochondria can use. That is where the real problem is because we start with maybe glucose and then it goes through all these different steps on this assembly line to the point where eventually the mitochondria can use that fuel and then everything works nicely, right? But in the last step of this assembly line, there's an enzyme that stops working because you're overloading this carburetor with too much fuel and you put out the spark plug like vitamins and minerals. This problem really is a nutrient deficiency because when you consume so much sugar going through the bloodstream, the increased demand for nutrients goes way, 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 way up. And so eventually you're going to deplete these nutrients from your tissues and you're going to be high and dry. There's not going to be any nutrients there for the glucose to be able to convert into the form of fuel that your mitochondria needs. So you can imagine it's kind of like this biochemical pathway that you now get this bottleneck. It just kind of dams up. And then that backs up in the system and creates lactic acidosis and for radical damage and all sorts of issues. Enzymes basically do all the work in the body. They can transform one thing to another thing. And all these enzymes have coenzymes or cofactors, which basically are the vitamins and minerals. But I just wanted to interject one other additional thing that happens in this process. Your body has all sorts of backup plans, like a plan B, to try to give the body energy. So one alternative pathway, the byproduct of that pathway is sorbitol, which is a sugar alcohol. Here's the problem with sorbitol. Sorbitol gets stuck in certain tissues, like the lens of the eye, to cause cataracts like the 
retina, which causes diabetic retinopathy, which is a, a problem with the retina, because what's happening, the cells are swelling up. Also, sorbitol gets into the cells that make that insulation around the wire, around the nerve. That swells up, and that breaks up and goes haywire. And then sorbitol also can convert to fructose, which creates more problems. The big question is, what are these cofactors that allow that enzyme to work and start to heal these nerves so you can get rid of the pain? The first one is vitamin B1. But here's the big problem. If you try to get your B1 from your diet when you've already had diabetes, you're going to have a really hard time because you would need a lot of it therapeutically to fix this problem. And this is a common thing that I hear even with doctors that don't really understand nutrition. They'll say, well, you can get all your nutrients from your food. Well, maybe some, but it's really hard to get all of your nutrients, especially if you're trying to therapeutically correct something. Now, can you just take B1? Well, here's the problem with B1. B1 is water-soluble. So the water-soluble has a hard time getting into that fat-soluble nerve to fix it. So it's a synthetically made fat-soluble B1. It's called benfotamine. Normally it comes in, I think, 300 milligrams. and You take just one of those four times a day. Sometimes supplements come with the next remedy I'm going to talk about, and that's called lipoic acid. Lipoic acid is another cofactor for that enzyme that's not working. And this is based on working with tens of thousands of people over 30 years. And I had a huge practice with a lot of diabetics. So I've used this over and over. So I have a lot of experience uh, getting success with this condition. There's three more nutrients that are involved, vitamin B5, vitamin B2, and vitamin B3. So those are all the cofactors for that enzyme to allow you to metabolize the glucose. So then it can be converted to something that your mitochondria can actually use. So hypothetically, you could actually be a diabetic and not have peripheral neuropathy if you took a lot of this nutrition. But why would you want to do that? Why not correct it by lowering the carb? Okay, so you want to go on low carb plus intermittent fasting. Now, there's another reason why you want to do this because diabetes over time chronically creates a cascade of all sorts of problems that go very deep into your nervous system up into the brain. On one hand, the first type of symptoms are the foot pain and the hand pain, things like that. But then it can spread to other parts of your body, especially the autonomic nervous system. Constipation, you might get stomach pain, things like that. You might start having heart problems. Now, you could just change your diet, right? And you're going to feel great relief on the bottom of your foot. But I've noticed certain people get relief, but it's, it doesn't always go away 100% unless they do high doses of benfotamine and lipoic acid. But ultimately, it's very, very important to correct the real problem, which is the diet. And for that, you need to study and watch this video right here.